Are you truly living life or merely surviving? Whether you want more time, more love, more money, or whether you want it all, we want to help you get there. The best part? Everything you want lies on the other side of fear and self-doubt. It's time to take the leap with your host, Tiffany Toombs. Hello, everybody, and welcome back for week three of the Take the Leap podcast. Over the next couple weeks, when I am not interviewing some incredible people who have taken the leap in their own lives, I want to start sharing with you some of the most common things that I see getting in people's way when they are considering taking the leap into their dreams and into the life that they've always wanted. And so today I want to look at your environment. You may have heard, if you've done any sort of personal development, that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Now, if you have kids, this doesn't mean that you're the average of your kids, because your kids are essentially mini-me versions of you and your partner. But it's anybody over the age of 18, anyone who's human, um, anyone that you would go to when you have a problem, any time, anyone that you spend a large amount of time with. And they, these people make up your average in all areas of your life. So if we look at the six areas of your life being health, emotional or mental, relationships, finance, business or career, and spiritual, spiritual being whatever that means for you, whether that's organized religion, meditation, charity work, self-love time, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with in all of those areas. And from a greater sense, you're an average of everyone in your environment. So there's also another phrase in the personal development world that your net work equals your net worth. And so if you look at the people in your environment, if you look at their health, you'll have some people who have better health than you, some people who have worse than you, and you'll be the average. You'll have some people who make a lot more money than you, some people who make a lot less, and you will be the average. Now, they, these people make up your average, but you also make up their average. And that's really what I want to talk about today is when you start to leave your comfort zone, how these people in your environment typically react. Before we look at how they react, however, we need to understand the concept of the comfort zone. So I'm sure you've all seen a meme on social media somewhere where there's a circle and it says comfort zone and then there's another circle outside there and it says this is where the magic happens. So our comfort zone by and large is the place that we love to spend the most of our time and 95% of the population spends their life living in this comfort zone because it's comfortable, otherwise it wouldn't be called the comfort zone. Now here's the thing about the comfort zone. It's safe to be in the comfort zone. And that's why most people spend their life living in the comfort zone. From a brain perspective, the most primal part of our brain, which ultimately drives our behavior, loves when we're in the comfort zone because it knows that we're safe. It knows that there's nothing that can hurt us or that can kill us. And so this part of our brain wants us to stay inside of the comfort zone. This is why we become creatures of habit. If we drive the exact same way to work every day, if we drink the same coffee, if we go to the same coffee shop, we take the same set of stairs, our brain knows what to expect. It knows that there's no saber-toothed tigers or boogeymen hanging out in the nooks and crannies. And when we start to do something new, our... The, this primal part of our brain starts to get really uncomfortable because it doesn't know what to expect. And so all of a sudden, this primal part of our brain is on high alert. And this part of our brain is called the amygdala, and that's the fear center of our brain. And the amygdala goes on high alert because it needs to continually be scanning the environment 
to see what in our environment could potentially hurt us or kill us. Now, as soon as it's kind of cleared the environment and it knows that we're safe, then we go back into our comfort zone. The amygdala stops, it shuts down, and we can go back to living comfortably again. However, if you take the leap into the life that you truly want, you're going to need to leave your comfort zone at some point. And so when you leave your comfort zone, you actually move into what we call the panic zone. And that's why you get those feelings of intense anxiety and panic because you're in the panic zone. It's funny how this all makes sense. And so we get the racing heart. We get the dry mouth, the sweaty palms. We get the shaking knees and any other symptoms of anxiety that you might feel. And when this happens, a lot of people, because they're so uncomfortable with that feeling of anxiety, they decide that whatever they're doing isn't for them and they go back into the comfort zone. I have lost count of how many clients have said to me, well, if I was doing what I was meant to do, then it wouldn't be uncomfortable. I wouldn't have this anxiety, except that the more you stay in your comfort zone, the less that you have to do to get those feelings of anxiety when you leave the comfort zone. So if you've never stepped outside of your comfort zone before, I don't want you to go throw yourself out of a plane when you're taking the leap. I want you to just dip your toe at first, right? When I first started leaving my comfort zone years ago, it was little things like getting up and talking in front of two or three people. It was putting a post up on social media about something that I loved or a motivational quote. It was writing in my journal, my true feelings and being honest with myself. It was sharing my story with close friends. I didn't just all of a sudden stand up in, full, in front of a room full of strangers one day and talk about my miscarriage and talk about the time that I almost stepped out in front of a cab. I started small and that's what you need to do in order to sustain these steps outside of the comfort zone. So take one step at a time. You don't need to go and jump all the way in because it's less likely to be sustainable. Our unconscious mind and that amygdala will pull us back so fast if we take too big of a step. Now, the thing is, once we stay in that panic zone for a little while, our body starts to see that, okay, you know what? This isn't so bad. I can put up a post on social media that is motivating. I can share my story with a couple friends and not be judged and I can be okay with it. No limbs fell off. I survived. I'm still alive. And when your amygdala sees that that step outside of the comfort zone didn't actually put you in danger, then your comfort zone grows and you move into what we call the growth zone because your comfort zone gets a little bit bigger. So then the next time you go to step outside of your comfort zone, you have to do something even bigger. So for me right now, I've just signed on to do an international speaking tour. And for me, that's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. Now I'm talking about how do I make a million dollars in the next 12 months and something like that, a goal like that is something that's outside of my comfort zone. So the more regularly you step outside of your comfort zone, the bigger step that you have to take. I just want you to start with baby steps if you've never done it before. Now back to talking about the people who are in your environment. They, whenever you step outside of your comfort zone, you pull them outside of their comfort zone. Because here's the thing, they make up your average, but you make up theirs. And so when you start stepping outside of your comfort zone and you start raising your average, which is what you do when you start to grow and you start to step outside of your comfort zone, you're raising your average, you pull their average up. And so when you start walking this journey towards your truth and towards your passion, the thing is, is that you become a light. Now, some people will see that light as you lighting the pathway for them to then follow you and follow in your footsteps and you inspire those people. 
And then there's other people who are going to see that light as a negative thing. They see it as you highlighting all the areas in their life that they're playing small and that will make them uncomfortable. So I regularly have clients who come to me or students in my programs and they say something like, I put up a post on social media and my brother or my sister or my cousin, they threaten to unfollow me. And I said, that's great. You're on the right track then. And they said, what? No, I, like, I, you know, I don't want to upset my family. Here's the thing. It's highly unlikely your family is ever going to be in your target market. Your family has known you through all of your crap. And they will typically hold on to the version of you that they seen when you were back in diapers or... You know, if you were like me when you wore the big Coke bottle glasses and you had missing, you know, your teeth were all crooked or whatever, right? They're always going to see you as that person that you used to be. One of my mentors, Ryan Stuman, says, what's the fastest way to become an expert? Fly two states over where nobody knows you. Because presenting to your own friends and family, people who have known you forever, they're always going to see you as that person that you used to be. I grew up in a really small country town. When I was growing up, everyone knew everyone. Everyone knew everyone's business. My dad used to um, go grocery shopping and clothes shopping and really any shopping in his slippers. Or he would wear like two or three different colors of plaid. And so I remember as a teenager and a young girl going into stores and people saying, oh, your dad's the guy who shops in his slippers. And I was horrified. Now, when I was in high school, I, you know, I snuck out. I went to parties. I don't know if my parents ever found out. So mom and dad, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. The thing is, is I knew how to create a persona of being the goody goody. I was involved in school council. I was involved in the peer support team. I got straight A's. And so I had this reputation for being the goody goody. Now, when I graduated high school and I wanted to start figuring out who I was, I couldn't do that in my small town because everyone just expected me to be this person. And that's how your family and your friends that you've had forever are. They're going to always hold you by the reputation or by the persona that was created for you when you were growing up. Families don't, most, most families don't really allow for a whole lot of growth and reinvention. And so for me, I went away to university and then when I finished university, I went to the other side of the world where no one knew me and I could be a different person every day if I wanted to until I figured out exactly who I wanted to be. And so I want you to know that as you take this leap into your life, whether you're taking baby steps and you're at the very beginning of your journey or whether you're jumping all the way in, I want you to know that your friends and family might have judgments and your friends and family might say things like, I don't know if you should start your own business. That's not the safe thing to do. Maybe you should stick with the nine to five job and just do this on the weekends in your free time, right? Are you sure you can make this work? Those judgments say more about them than they do about you. And I want you to know, and I've, I've made this the second theme that I'm talking about in this podcast because I'm so passionate about letting people know that when people have judgments against you, it says nothing about you and everything about them. When you're stepping outside of your comfort zone and you're chasing your passion and you're doing what you're passionate about, you are going to make other people uncomfortable because you're going to show them all the places that they're staying stuck, all the places that they're giving into fear, all the places where they're staying in their comfort zone and they're afraid to really look at themselves in the mirror and to be honest with themselves. That has nothing to do with you. And when these judgments come up, 
you need to keep pushing forward. You need to inspire them and to be the light because here's the thing. The more you raise your average, you're going to show them what is possible. You're going to show them what they could do if they face their own fears. And I promise you, they will turn around. I promise you that. You just have to keep going and keep pushing past the naysayers. And even when you fail and they say, I told you so, fail forward, learn the lessons that you need to and get back up on the horse and keep going. You didn't fail. You learned a way that didn't work. You learned a lesson. And my other suggestion for dealing with these naysayers is not to go and fire all these people. Um, You know, if they're really toxic, then you might need to look at who you have in your environment and if they're really serving you to have in your environment. However, if they're not overly toxic, they're just not overly supportive, you don't necessarily need to fire them. You need to add people to your environment who are going to support you. For me, I have joined a number of mastermind programs through social media and they have been an absolute blessing because the people that I have met in these programs are some of my biggest supporters, some of my biggest cheerleaders, and some of my biggest referral sources for my business. And I'm in the process right now of putting together my own community where I'm bringing a group of amazing people together and we can support and lift each other up to keep going on this journey and to continue to push each other outside of our comfort zones and to call people on when we're being complacent or when we are self-sabotaging so that you continue to move forward towards your passion and purpose. So just a quick recap, I want you to know that the people who are in your environment, they are going to be the ones that you make the most uncomfortable when you start going on your journey. And there may be people that you meet in mastermind programs who are big supporters. And depending on how much you grow and how quickly you grow, just keep in mind that you may outgrow them at some point as well. I'm somebody who's continually pushing to get to the next level and continuing to step outside of my comfort zone every single day and to continue to find new mountains to climb. My rate of growth happens really, really fast. And I know that there's people who come into my life and then equally leave just as quickly because they can't keep up with my rate of growth. The other thing that my mentor, Ryan Steumann, says is one of his core values is live and let leave. And I honestly believe that, the, that everyone comes into your life for a reason. And some people are meant to stay for a lifetime. And some people aren't. Some people come into your life for a short period of time to teach you a lesson, whether these are business partners, whether these are friends, whether these are intimate partners, maybe they're clients or prospects. You're going to have people who come into your life to teach you lessons. And I was actually, I was reading something the other day and I was thinking, you know, I'm extremely grateful for all the people who have come into my life and who have found a way to leave, whether it was ex-business partners who ended up betraying me. I'm grateful for that experience because it's led me to where I am now. I now know to do my due diligence before I get into business with somebody. I now know that it doesn't matter how much I trust somebody or how good of friends we are, I need to do my due diligence in the business and see all aspects of the business. I need to know where the finances are at. I need to know where all the agreements and contracts are at. And I need to read all of those on my own. Instead of relying on somebody else to do that for me, I need to do those things. The friendships that haven't worked out, they've all taught me how to set boundaries. They've taught me how to be more self-loving. They've, told, they've shown me how to show up 
as the best possible friend and person that I can be every single day. And the relationships that didn't work out, well, they taught me what I wanted in a partner, right? If you had asked me 10 years ago what my ideal partner would have looked like, I probably wouldn't have said that I want them to be passionate about something. I wouldn't have said things like, I want them to hold me accountable and to call me out on my bullshit. 10 years ago, that I would have thought that somebody calling me out on my bullshit was just being mean. And now I look for a partner who can say in a loving manner, you know what, I think you're playing small right now. Or is this, how, is this a form of self-sabotage for you? I want somebody who can do those things. I want somebody who can be a team player and who can support me. And so I want you to, I'm going to give you some homework this week. I want you to sit down and look at all the people who have left your life. And the people who have hurt you the most are typically the biggest lessons. However, we typically hold on to that hurt and on to the grudge so much that we don't actually take time to learn the lesson. So what I really want you to do this week is I want you to sit down and write down those people's names on a piece of paper. And I want you to write down the lesson that they taught you. Why did they come into your life? What did that experience teach you? What resources and skills and tools did that situation or that circumstance give you so that you can better show up and take that leap into the life that you truly always have wanted. Now I'm going to leave you for today with a quote that came up on my social media recently. And this quote is, a shark in a fish tank will grow eight inches, but in the ocean it will grow eight foot or more. The shark will never outgrow its environment. And the same is true about you. Many times we're around small thinking people, so we don't grow. Change your environment and watch your growth. So if you're not already following me on social media, check out my Facebook page, Tiffany Toombs Coaching and Training. I have some amazing programs and communities coming up that will help you grow and that will help you become that eight foot shark and to take that leap into the life that you want and the life that you deserve. And please remember to leave me a review, share this podcast with somebody that you think needs it. The more people that we can help take a leap, the bigger your community will become and the more support outside of your comfort zone you'll have. So please share this with somebody, leave me a review, and I'll see you next week where I am interviewing the amazing and very talented Sydney Clevenger. Have a great week and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.